Welcome back, folks, to another Budget Gem or Budget Bust. Today, I've got an amp for you that I have been really dying to get on the Amp Dyno and just see if the power is real on this or not. Um, I really haven't been disappointed yet by an OptiSeries Lanzar. Um, maybe somewhat disappointed with the 4000D I tested in terms of its efficiency and not really, really cranking the power out. But I have hopes for this one here. I had hope, like the 1400D was a good amp. I'm hoping that this one is as well. Um, I want to see if this is a budget gem or not, period. You know, I want to see if I can get 2000 watts out of it. Um, I've already unboxed this amplifier here because I was so excited to see what it looked like because Opti Series amps, they just have the most beautiful heat sink um, that I can think of. I mean, they stand out, they pop, they look fantastic. Um, so I picked this up here for right around 230, 240 bucks uh, from Deal Buys off eBay, which is their official store for the Sounds Around group. Um, came in pretty quick, and now I get to try it out. Um, ratings on this amplifier are 700 watts by one at four ohms, 1100 watts by one at two ohms, and we've got 1600 watts at 1.33 ohms RMS, and it's listed as 2,000 watts max. Uh, on the back box it says 0.5 ohms. It didn't quite say it in the owner's manual, so I'm hoping that's at one ohm, um, because I know some of these amps really aren't stable in the amp dyno at 0.5. Uh, but they are Korean amps, and could this be something that's a contender for a top quality uh, budget amp under 300 bucks well we're gonna find out um, one of the things that I did unbox here was the remote base knob it's really nothing special here um, the quality on these is okay I mean they're a metal base knob the potentiometer on these feels a little cheap nothing special a um, little plasticky right there but I mean, these are old designs, folks. I mean, these lands are opties. The, they haven't done much with these amps in years. And I mean years, like years, years, lots of years, okay? So I'm not expecting high efficiency. Um, what I'm hoping for is decent quality though. So we are going to, uh, in a minute here, strap it up to the amp dyno, but first, Let's take a walk around the app and see what you get here for all 200 to 300 bucks. Along this side of the amplifier, we find our uh, power, ground, remote input connections, as well as our speaker outputs, um, in addition to our fuses. Um, this comes with 180 amps of fusing, which should be enough to get us past our 2000 watts hopefully um, I wish they'd done one aught uh, power and grounds on these um, as you can see here these are just four gauge terminals here um, 2000 watts I mean if you're running from the battery in front of your vehicle uh, you really want one aught um, if not larger if you can fit it uh, but you can always use a reducer and get it down there. So it's not a deal breaker. Um, just realize you have that compromise. Um, these are pretty good sized 8 gauge speaker output terminals over here. So not bad looking from this side. Along this side of the amplifier we have all of our settings as well as our RCA inputs and outputs and our data link for strapping amplifiers. Um, you can see right here. Um, we've got a, a switch to switch between 180 degrees and zero degrees of phase. Um, it'd be nice if you use phase, um, if this was adjustable, unfortunately it's not. Um, we've got our gain right here, subsonic filter, which is adjustable from 15 hertz to 40 hertz, uh, which is nice. It's not just, uh, it's not stopped at like 25 hertz like I've seen with some other amplifiers. Um, or not adjustable, um, so that's good. We have a low-pass filter from 50 hertz to 150 hertz. 
Uh, you have your worthless base boost from 0 to 18 dBs of boost. Just leave that off. Um, you have a switch here to switch between master and slave. This data link, that is for strapping two of these bad boys together. Um, and there, of course, is your remote base knob uh, connector as well. Uh, one thing I do feel like you do have to um, be careful of with these amplifiers or to watch out for. Uh, most of the times when you see the RCA ins, they're all the way to the left for in and right for output. And this is reversed here. So these are your inputs and that's your output. Um, so be mindful of that when you're setting this amplifier up. All right, let's take a look at these guts. And ooh, pretty nice looking guts here if you ask me. Um, let's check to see how everything's seated. These transformers look pretty good. Caps look good. The caps are 105 degree, um, which is good. 2200 microfarad, very nice as well. Um, so the cap capacitors seem pretty nice. Uh, oh, these look a little bit on the loose side, yeah. So I would probably add some glue onto these parts of the amplifier here um, because the amp could be susceptible to vibration damage. Um, you might be saying, well, how would, how would the amp get vibration damage? Well, for those of you out there who are dumb enough to mount your amplifier to the sub box directly without some type of vibration dampening um, material or, you know, a very quite frankly, cheaply made box without a lot of bracing or whatnot, you know, you're gonna vibrate your amp to death. Even one that doesn't have any connections that might be a little bit on the looser side. Um, for this one though, definitely, I would highly, highly, highly recommend some additional glue in mounting the amp in a non, um, harsh section of the car in terms of vibration uh, but other than that i mean it's a good looking amp board um, tons of cooling ability with this heat sink so not so bad lanzar all right folks nothing left to do here but to strap up the lanzar opti 2000d to the trusty amp dyno and find out just how much power this sub 300 dollar korean 2k amp actually produces I'm excited to find out. Let's do this.
thoughts here on the Lanzar Opti 2000D. Um, we just saw the results and we'll start by is it a gem or is it a bust? I'm going with a gem. Um, it made its power uh, 4 ohms down to 1.33 ohms just like it was rated. Um, it did the 2000 watts granted uncertified at 1 ohm but you are getting the 2000 watts. Um, I gotta replay the video um, but I believe it was right around 1900 plus certified so uh, not a bad job here I think it's a pretty good value it is not the most efficient 2000 watt amp I've tried but it's not the 4000D it's not like 40% efficient I mean it's it's okay not great um, especially for a class D but still um, off camera, I've had this playing on a subwoofer. It gets mildly warm after a couple hours, but nothing um, extraordinary, nothing that really should uh, be a detriment to the amp. And it sounds really good. I mean, that's really the big point of this, isn't it? Is to see, is this a good sounding amp? And I'm confident this one is a pretty good sounding amp. There are some things I wish they did different. I've already explained that, but you know, if you are looking for a green amplifier, you want roughly 2,000 watts, you want a gorgeous looking amp, don't be afraid to look at the Lanzar Opti 2000D. It's, it's a pretty good deal going out there right now. And that's it for me, folks. Till next time, I got way more amps to test. See ya.